That's the recording. Okay. So um, lecture five today. Hope everyone is doing well on a, yeah, I can't remember what date is Tuesday. Uh, the days are just kind of weird during this pandemic. They just like blend together. Um, so just another, I always put up little things here either about what we're doing or just uh, something related to a job maybe with environmental science or similar. Um, so I thought this guy's, uh, this guy's uh, job or research is pretty cool, looking at like using radar to see how unstable the ice is to see if it's going to fall off and, uh, or retreat at any point. So it's kind of cool. If you like cold weather, there's plenty of jobs up there with like, uh, you know, climate change and measuring and all that stuff. Okay, so uh, bits and pieces for today. Um, the, your homework is all marked on the calendar and I haven't really had too many questions about it. So I'm assuming it's pretty self-explanatory, but just keep checking. Like if you're unsure what we're doing that lesson, um, check your calendar and it should say it in, I believe it was blue font, yep. Um, so like for today would be library module one. Um, the only things that you need to turn in on as you learn were the reading tasks. Uh, so unless it's like a reading task, um, you know, you don't have to turn it in. We'll just discuss it. Okay. Um, and uh, so if you are the kind that like maybe you don't remember to check or you want an extra reminder, um, I do try to send reminders on this app, the Remind app that you can sign up for if you want. It's free and you can get them as a text. So, you know, might not be a big deal now. Uh, maybe when there's like the ones that the assignments you have to submit, you want a reminder, or maybe not, it's completely up to you. Uh, but I just try to do that so that I don't like clutter the as you learn, like everyone getting them. Um, just uh, so, yeah. Okay, uh, so last lesson we did, uh, we talked about drawings and diagrams and photos and how uh, we, uh, you know, the first ways to capture environmental information, which were through like hand drawings and then more detailed drawings and then through the printing uh, press. Um, and then we started talking about photographs and how those have evolved, um, even from when I was in college to you guys. So, um, all right, so today, oops, today we are going to be continuing the unit we're doing, which is from pressure maps to GIS. Uh, we're kind of coming to the end of the first unit. Um, and I do want to do a quick poll for your reading groups and also for your class preference. So uh, reading groups will really come more into play uh, when we start the reading discussion. So for the first reading test. Uh, so it's when you guys are going to be leading the discussion. Um, and really you can use those however you want. Like you might just want to like email back and forth to say, hey, who's doing what questions and, or how are we going to do the discussion? But some people like really hit it off with their friend, with their group and then they do stuff outside the class or they want to be grouped together in class activities, stuff like that. So I'm going to ask you guys a poll question about how you want these reading groups. And then the other poll question is going to be your class preference. So Thursday this week is when we're supposed to be in person for the first time. Um, so there's a question about that. Um, just to get a feel for where everyone is, uh, you know, feeling right now. So I am going to launch it. Uh, in a minute, the poll. Okay, so if you could just vote for those two questions, um, they are anonymous. So all I want is just get the overall feel for the class. Um, read all the options first to make sure that you know for each question. Okay, five more people left to vote. Three more. So make sure you vote if you haven't. You're just getting organized. I don't know who hasn't voted because, okay, two more people, two more people. Because I, uh, it's anonymous, so I have no clue. So if you haven't, make sure you do. We have two more people left. Who hasn't voted? Come on. Okay, one more person. One more person. Oh, actually, this I think someone had their internet. I think maybe one person just their internet probably dropped. 
Okay, so it's fine. Oh, there they are. Okay, so whoever, oh, is it Riley? Riley, did you get bumped off? Riley, if you didn't vote yet, vote, okay? I think you may have gotten bumped off, right? Yeah, I did. Sorry, I messed up. Okay. Okay, no worries. Vote if you can, if you haven't already. And I think okay, you're the I'll last speak. person. And then I'll okay, display I'll it. Speak. Okay, sorry, I can't see the poll on my screen. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, that's weird. All right, can you guys still see it? You should still be okay, well, it's fine. Um, you still can't? It's gonna be no, floating sorry. there somewhere. Yeah, it's not showing up on my Okay, well, if you want to, um, uh, okay, I don't think I can do anything else on my end to show it. Um, but anyway, I think we have a, a big variety, so I don't think it's gonna matter. It's like, yeah. All right, let me show you guys what it is and, and poll. Okay, share results. So basically we have, um, so kind of like the same one by similar major interests totally random um, by dorm and location, keeping in mind in-person remote preference. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna do this because there's no pattern to this, but um, anyway, I guess what we'll do is like, if you are one of the people, if you're one of the, okay, we'll do it like this. If you're one of the people that said by major interest, okay, or by dorm location or keeping in person remote preference. So if you're one of the um, of the people and Kylie and uh, Riley and um, um, who is just connecting, hold on. Olivia, so Riley and Olivia, you guys can also send me the chat if you want since you didn't get a vote. So if you're one of the people that did not say randomly that actually had a preference, send me a chat of like, if there's, if you could be like, okay, uh, like Elizabeth could be like uh, by major, you know, or something like that. And then I can see like who wanted by major and stuff and I can try to do some that are, uh, you know, set up like that and the others randomly, okay? So if you have a preference, uh, because maybe you know someone in the dorm or whatever, just write, just send me a chat saying, I'd rather be with someone in my dorm or I'd rather be with, uh, you know, with someone of my similar interest or major. But you are gonna have to help me out if it's someone with a dorm because I don't know who's in what dorm. So send me a chat if you have a preference and I will indulge you if I can. Um, okay, the second option is, uh, so there should be about, yeah, like if, if you know, 12 people or 13 people have a, you know, wanted to be intentional, then just tell me what you want. Um, because then I know, you know, if Maureen and Emily say similar major, then I can find people that are in their major and so on, if that makes sense. Okay. So how are you feeling about in-person classes? 12 have no concerns, uh, four are, wor are a bit worried, uh, one wants to be outside, and two would rather continue remotely. This is actually really similar to the breakout in the other class, so I guess it's just like representative of the overall uh, student uh, body in first year seminars. Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna try this uh, on Thursday then to see if we can please everyone, is we will start the we will start, let me see for a second. Um, okay. We're gonna, if you're comfortable being in person in the classroom, come to the classroom, okay, that we're set, that we're set for. So I think it's an Edwin Duncan, uh, the one that is listed in your um, schedule. And I will send you a reminder. Um, if you're one of the people that said you'd rather be outside or you're worried or you wanna do it remotely, uh, you can follow along on Zoom. Okay, so I will have Zoom on so you can see what we're doing. And we'll probably do it, I'll probably do something for like a 15 minutes like introduction. And then I'm gonna have a, uh, some sort of activity that you can either do with other people in the class or you can do at home or you can do in, outside or wherever you want. Okay, so I will have an activity that's kind of independent so you can, if you wanna work with others, you can in the class. If you wanna work on your own remotely, you can. Um, so hopefully people will be comfortable with that and we'll try that format out, okay? Um, so I think that should more or less uh, keep everyone happy. Um, any questions about that? Any issues? Anyone want to say anything? Um, I see two people send me a chat. So if you have a preference over the group, if you know someone in the group or whatever, um, just let me know um, and you know, 
any preference I can I can do. Okay. So otherwise I will just uh you know do it randomly because I don't know who voted for what. Um okay. Anything else? No? People are just fine, happy. Okay. Oh, I am going into Gifford. Hold on again. Okay, so today uh, the library module one was due. To, um, so I want to ask you these three questions. You can answer any of them. Uh, you know, what were the main takeaways you got from this module? Um, how have you used library services in the past? Like maybe you learned something that maybe was totally different than the way you used it in your school or like if you've been to a public library, maybe it was the same, or maybe it had nothing, like it's totally new to you. Um, what similarities are there? And then, um, yeah, basically tell me what you got out of the, sub, out of the chapter or the module. Okay, so who, who wants to start? Who wants to, any, anyone um, want to get us going here? Who wants to get us going here? Uh, so what did you get? Did someone read it? <laughs> Oh, Kelsey, yes, I thank did. you. Okay, yeah, Kelsey, did. go. Tell us um, something you got out of it. Well, I didn't know that like we could chat with librarians or like send them texts. I didn't know that like that kind of communication was so easy. Um, and they really are like an amazing resource for us. Um, and also I thought it was, I didn't know that we had like a music library. Um, and then like up on the fourth floor, how there are different um, like history, like the history of kind of our region um, up in Boone. I thought that was really interesting. And I also love how on each floor it's like different volumes <laughs> and it just gets quieter as you keep going up. So I really like that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's great. And um, I like that you pointed out like the little extras and definitely about the chatting feature. That's huge. Like I've used that so much. Uh, like if I'm not finding an article that I want, like a journal article, and um, they have to like get it from somewhere else, like you literally go in the chat and they will reply to you. Usually they're on like immediately and it's really helpful. So if you have to like find a source for a class and you have no idea how to do it, or like there's something showing up on like Google search, but you somehow don't have access to it, it's more likely that we do have access. You just have to go through the library to do it. So just ask them, be like, I really want this article. Uh, how do I get it? Um, or like if you're doing something, let's say you have, uh, you're doing something on like uh, for political science on the life sentence um, and uh, you want to know like what is the best place to look for these, what are the best journals, because obviously there's some that are going to be more uh, reliable than others, you can also ask them uh, just on the chat, be like, hey, where can I look for these kind of sources? Uh, so yeah, great, uh, great point about the chat feature, definitely use it. Um, okay, what else, what else? What else did people get? Um, let's see, uh, let's have Jacob D from San Francisco and tell us how you ended up in Boone. I'm kind of curious. Uh, I moved, I was born in San Francisco, but I moved to Charlotte, uh, in 2012. So, yeah. Um, so you didn't have much of a choice. No, no, I was, <laughs> no, I didn't have a choice. Um, yeah, I, I got the same thing. Thing. Just, I like how is the fourth floor the one with all the TVs and all the I didn't know uh, that uh, the library had like the TVs fourth floor. like for watching TVs or are you talking about the uh, are you talking about the computers for like doing things like uh, graphic design those are on the bottom yeah that's not, yeah yeah so in the yeah bottom so floor, if you don't have like uh, if you don't have like uh, like access to the internet you can get a library which is pretty cool which yeah yeah so the um the bottom floor is actually really cool and especially for people like joel and charlotte who are getting into the music industry um there is actually like an like an actual recording studio down there uh so like a professional recording studio that you can um that you can reserve 
and you can like if you know someone who plays instruments and you can be like hey let's go and try something out and you can be the ones directing them or whatever um you can actually just rent it um also if you're doing um any kind of uh journalism or things like that and you have to do like a little video for something um you can also do uh, there's also like a green screen room like a professional green screen room with all the different tvs and there, like you can even have like the teleprompt um so that's really cool uh so those two are in the bottom and if you like video games uh which i'm sure people here some people say like video games or like um um jacob jacob b you, you do computer science i don't know if you like video game design but all those things are on the bottom floor there's like some really advanced like uh you know uh software development programs and like huge screens and all the newest technology and there's also a video game room where you can test video games and you have things like the vr headsets that you can rent out um you have all kinds of stuff that you can borrow so uh the the bottom floor is definitely a really good place to um yeah, to, to know. Um, and we also have 3D printing. Uh, Maureen, who is into uh, fashion, right? I think it was Maureen. Uh, you can, uh, there's actually sewing machines down there. So you can go down and use the sewing machines. They have like things like uh, the cutting machines for like, a, you know, you could do all kinds of patterns, uh, wood, wood carving, 3D printing, all that stuff. So really cool. Um, yeah, so there's some hidden gems in the library. Okay, anything else, anything else? What did you guys learn about, uh, Sources, but anyone remember anything about sources? Sources, like what is a reliable source? Like, um, you know, Jenna, like what about Jenna? Did you, uh, you're hammocking, is, uh, is your brain still working? Or are you too relaxed? Um, did, you, uh, did you read into the module? Do you know anything? Like your science, so like what about like primary sources, secondary, those ring a bell? Yeah, I mostly knew all of that before I read it. It was just, stuff I've already learned. Okay, mm, you made it very easy for me to uh, pop quiz you. Uh, okay, so let's say a page, let's say you are doing a project on the genetics of, since Jenna is biochemistry, uh, the genetics of the Darwin finches, and you have a page from Darwin's journal. What kind of source would that be? It's a primary source. Very good, Jenna. Okay. Can anyone give you pass? Can anyone give me an example of a secondary course, uh, secondary source, secondary source? What who else is up? Maybe we'll continue with that biology thing. Uh, Elizabeth, what about you? Uh, you want me to say a secondary source? Yeah. Like if you're, what would, what would count as a secondary source? Like, something that is built upon a primary source basically okay so. so if you are still doing this genetics uh, research with the darwin finches what could be a secondary source like let's say that um let's say that jenna has done an experiment he she has uh you know done the genetic typing for all these different species uh what could be a secondary source and you someone can help her out if you want like her paper based on the yeah. Yeah, her paper yeah. based on that. Um, if it's Jenna's paper, that would be primary because she is like the investigator that's going okay. to go out and use the research. But if it's your paper, like you're writing about what she's done, then it would be secondary. Or like if you're doing a project where you're looking at what like, you're talking about like the work that Lexi has done and Gracie has done all that, then that would be secondary. But it's still reliable. Um, what about tertiary? Like, can someone give you an example of a tertiary source? Um, and we can move away from the, um, you know, we can move away from the science if we want and get someone, um, uh, well, what kind of things do you guys do in uh, business, Will? I'm trying to come up with an example here, but give me a, like a tertiary source of some, you know. Oh, uh, encyclopedia article. Okay, encyclopedia article, yeah, that, that would be, yeah, that could be their secondary or tertiary, but yeah, probably tertiary, yeah. What would like a Wikipedia one be? Uh, anyone know? So like if it's a Wikipedia article about some sort of research or an event that happened, maybe it's an event that happened, like maybe it's something like the, um, I don't know, the, the Hindenburg or whatever. <laughs> what do you guys think that would be? And then go to chat. Yeah, my, Michaela, what do you think? So um, would that be like when they provide links to other sources? So it's like tertiary, tertiary, so I can't say, 
um, it gives you it provides a whole bunch of other sources so you can find like more specific words that give you ideas of more detailed stuff you can research on the specific topic yeah and it's not necessarily going to be like it might not be as it's not going to be as reliable as secondary so this might be people like that are not like scientists or that are not experts in that topic that are just kind of seeing what's out there and telling you about it so some of them are going to be a gray area like some sources could be the either secondary or tertiary and it's hard to like tell um, but the, what the most important thing you need to know when doing any kind of whatever your uh, major is, is like you're doing a project, um, the closer it is to the primary source, the more reliable. Okay, so if it's the closer it is, the more reliable as, as you start getting further and further away, it becomes less reliable as you can imagine. Um, good. Okay, anything else that people gathered? Anything else people gathered? Um, Jasmine, where's Jasmine? Jasmine, you like llamas. How yes. do you find information about llamas? How is how is the information like uh, grouped? Um, what would be the first step, maybe, to make it easier? To find information about llamas, like at the library. Yes. Um, I would probably ask like the librarian where. <laughs> Good answer. To find okay. Them. That's that's totally fine. Good answer. For, very good. Just use your research. If you were shy, you don't want to as a librarian. Anyone can anyone tell me how these subjects are um, organized? How are these subjects organized? So how would Jasmine find information about uh, llamas? Any idea? Like, is it the same as other libraries you've been to? Maybe you know the name of the system? Who was someone's I know there's, name? I know they're so, sorted by uh, alphabetical order, but I forget what floors. I know it's like maybe first floor, second floor, or something like that. Okay, they're by alphabetical order. But before that, what is the bigger? What are the biggest categories? Are you talking about the Dewey Decimal System? Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. So most libraries are, yeah, are according to the Dewey, um, to the Dewey System. So it's like by broad categories, like geography and politics, things like that. And then within those, you are uh, it's alphabetized. So good job, thank you. Okay. Uh, so Jasmine would probably want to look for like the nature and science uh, category, and that's where then you'd find the uh, you know stuff about llamas. Okay, great. So um, let's move on for the library then, and I hope that you guys uh, check it out. And uh, yeah, it should be. I've had students that haven't set foot in the library for like three semesters, and that's crazy. It should be like one of the places you visit the most. There's some great corners in there. I have no idea what it looks like right now, by the way, but I'm guessing there's some areas for you to sit at. I haven't been. Okay, moving on. All right, so how, um, let's see, what kind of information, so we're talking about mapping environmental information today, like making maps, showing environmental information here. So how do, what kind of information is included here? Um, what are we looking at here? Can anyone tell me like what kind of information are we linking to like a specific place? So we're talking about how we're linking global information to a specific places. What is this map showing? Migration routes of locos disasters. Yeah, okay, so the main, the main thing that's being mapped here, the main uh, data that's being mapped is uh, the movement of locusts. So these insects, the locusts, uh, where they are moving from, okay? Uh, what other, is there any other information about it that we have? So it's distinguishing before, between where they're, uh, where they're migrating, where they're originating. Um, what about the different colors? How are the different colors, what are the different colors uh, signifying the different areas that are being colored in different ways? The severity of impact. Sorry, say it again. The severity of the impact. Of the severity of the, the impact. Locus. Yeah. Okay. So the blue and the red would be the this. Yeah. The low incidence versus moderate incidence. Yeah. Uh, and then it looks like what is the what do you think the green is? I mean, from other from the key, but what do you think that means? The green. What do you think uh, locus disaster safety zone means? Uh, there are no disasters. Sorry, Jacob, go ahead. 
it could mean like uh, locusts can't uh, handle that type of like, I guess climate. So okay, so it means like. There. So it means like that these places are safe from locust infestations from for now, but it doesn't. You know, we don't know if like the climate could could change, which is what's happening and why we're seeing them in more places. But for now, these green regions are considered safety zones. So people in those regions don't have to worry about these locusts invading. Um, and you are going to learn a lot more about locusts in a minute. Okay, what about up here? So there's no information in this map. Um, so what do you think this could mean? Like if there's no information about it, what do you think this could be? So this has something to do with locusts. Um, anyone want to take a guess at like what these years are? What, oh, sorry, I just give away half of the answer. Um, so, what do you think? <laughs> these could be representing like major events um, that had to deal with locusts, obviously, like maybe swarms or that type of thing that happened during those years in those um, countries. Yes, great, yeah. I'll see that's exactly it so these are these are the years in which these specific places suffered like plagues or outbreaks of locusts uh, so you can see where they spend the most like in china but also where there are some and how far away it goes like even like as far as australia there's also locust infestation so you can see um you know so they've used the they've placed the the different uh they've dropped the different pins in different places very roughly and then they've given you the years of this infestation good Okay, um, so we're going to talk, we're going to talk a little bit about GIS today and on, um, and on uh, Thursday. Um, so basically we've gone from like being able to take pictures of things that are in front of us, like the guy who would take a 20 minute photo of the landscape and stuff to now you guys being able to take photos in your phones, like thousands of photos every day. Um, but we're also now able to take photos from space. So not only standing on the earth can you capture environmental information, but also from space. So there's all these different satellites that are continuously go going around the earth taking photos. And some of them are private and some of them are public. So uh, they're, they're gathering so much information. Um, and we also have things like planes and drones uh, that are also gathering information from environmental information from the air. Okay, so we've gone out uh, and can anyone, does anyone know when we started doing these um, kind of air, aerial photos of the landscape and like what that was used for? Um, anyone like a history buff, like um, uh, Riley, you're, you're history ed, aren't you? Do you, do you know what, when, when we could have started that? Um, Any ideas? I mean, this is kind of like, you know, not some, something everyone would know, but just. When did we start yeah. taking photos from the air or why? Um, I guess probably whenever we developed the technology to do it, but I'm not really sure. Okay, but what would we have used it for? Yeah, so you're right, but why would we have needed, when were the first times we needed to do our photos from the air? It wasn't for science, it was for something else. Connor, what can you I know? say uh, the Cold yeah. War, I think, maybe? Yeah, so it had yeah, so it had to do with the war, not just the Cold War, but also during the war. Like, where were the enemy lines? What was the terrain like? Like, these were the first photos. The first aerial photos were actually for warfare, so uh, they were really rough, you know, in terms of resolution. They were black and white. Uh, then people started like coloring them by hand, and then it just got much more advanced from that. And now we're able to take, you know, infrared photos. You can see like a person sitting in a room in like some sort of remote place. Uh, you can see like where the weapons are, like all these different things that obviously they would have never been able to do. Uh, but you know, what we're interested in now is how we're using it to, uh, to visualize environmental information, to get, capture it. So we're gonna talk about that. Okay, so what you guys are gonna do next is I am going to give you time um, to, um, to learn more about this looming plague, which is all about locusts. You're gonna know everything about locusts by the end of this. Um, there's two things that I want you to do. One is watch a video which tells you a little bit about it. Um, so this is the, uh, the video that is linked to the slide. Um, it's about five minutes. And then you're going to read through this uh, story map, okay? And you will see what a story map is when you do it. Um, I'm gonna give you guys about 20 minutes to do this so you can take some good notes. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms so you can kind of compare each other's notes. 
okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the questions I want you to think about are these. I try to keep them simple so you don't have to write them down. So basically when you're doing this, I want you to make note of like environmental factors that are coming into play and how they're coming into play. I like Lex's technique. That's like what I do. Take a photo quick before she changes it. You're actually going to have a link to this PowerPoint soon. So, um, so for example, if you think rain has something to do with that, that would be abiotic. So you could have a little table and say like rain, and then you could say, okay, well, it makes it there be more locust or less or however you want to, you know, uh, describe it. And then the next thing is also make a list of any, um, any geographic data that is being used as part of this story map. So I've given you two examples that you can start with. So there's number of people affected, uh, that's geographic data. And then there's also where the heavy rains are happening. That's also geographic data, okay? So I am going to give you, um, let me, uh, okay, hold on. I'm going to send this to everyone, the, uh, the link to this PowerPoint, uh, actually to this one slide. Let me just give you the, uh, because otherwise I think, ah, no, I don't think there's any answers to this actually. Okay, I'll give you the link to my whole PowerPoint. Um, okay, one second. And you can actually come out and come back in. Uh, all right. Just making sure I have the permission settings right so you can actually see it. Okay. So I have, all right, so I have linked the PowerPoint there so you have access to my, to the link. But if you want to go directly, I can also have it so you can just open the window. Ooh, I just deleted that slide. So that was good. Hold on. I just somehow deleted this slide. Bring it back. Okay, there it is. Whew. All right. Ah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think it's easy. Just okay. I just follow the link that I gave you. You can have access to the both links there, so it doesn't get confusing. All right. So everyone has it like open in another window or whatever. Um, you're welcome to like disconnect if you want to come back. Let's say uh, 20 minutes to about like let's say 40. Uh, wait, that is not 20 minutes. Let's say about 50. 55 past, so 250, okay? Okay, 250, come back to us. You can either disconnect and come back or just leave it a mute, whatever you want. Take the video off, okay? We'll reconvene. Great, okay, I'm gonna bring you guys into rooms now just so you can kind of compare notes and then, um, and then I'll give you, um, We'll, we'll see what you have. I'll give you a five minute break and um, and then we will um, I will tell you a little bit more about what we're doing uh, next tomorrow uh, Thursday. All right, so uh, breakout rooms. This one's I'm gonna do randomly because I haven't set them up yet. Okay, I am going to assign to four rooms, okay? So here you guys go. Um, forget what it's for. I, I might just put it for like five minutes. Um, okay. Okay, let me set it before I open it so we don't get confused. Oh, hold on. Okay, so yeah, break our rooms will close automatically after six minutes. Okay, six minutes is good. All right, open up. Um, all right, yeah, I think everyone's back from the breakout rooms. Okay. So uh, what are some uh, what are some examples of, uh, for example, bio biotic and abiotic factors? So who can give us a couple or one that their group uh, agreed on, and how does it play a role in the in the swarm? This crazy uh, I'm sure everyone's feeling really itchy right now. 
I certainly am after seeing all those locusts. Um, so anyone, any, uh, what are some biotic and abiotic factors for these plagues? Uh, coronavirus. I'm tempted to say crickets now, but that would be too, too much of a pun. Um, all right, I'm gonna pick on you guys then. Uh, let's see, um, who came up with some? Janisha, talk to us. What did you come up with? Um, for abiotic, I got like any the, factors, biotic or abiotic. The cyclones for the abiotic and for biotic, like just the vegetation. Is Denisha there? So, I mean, I'm. She just leave it in. Olivia, yeah. do you want to help her out? Oh, she's oh, Olivia, can yeah, you, help her, help us out. Yeah, here. can you hear us? We're we're talk like people have been talking. Wait, am I like not hearing people? Okay, hold on, because I see people speaking. Yeah. Okay. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yes. Can you? Yeah, can you okay, hear me? Okay. Talking. Cool. 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 Um. Okay. Try it again. Um, you might want to go back to Denasia because she Emma, had something to say. What do you think? Give us a couple. Give us some biotic oh, no. and abiotic <laughs> factors. Um, can you hear oh, me? Oh. Sorry. Wait. Sorry. Was, did you say me? Okay. Anyone want to speak? So I know this is actually working. Emily, you're on. <laughs> Are you guys just like chatting among you and being like, how quiet can we be? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right. Uh, okay, give me a thumbs up if you wanna give yourself a 100% for class participation. Talk. Kelsey, talk to us. I don't know what everyone else is doing. Oh, oh we, we are talking, but I don't We're think talking. you can hear any of us. Okay, so I can't hear Kelsey either. So obviously there's something going on here. Check the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Check, Check the, the chat. chat. <laughs> I'm seeing the chat. Let's go. Check the chat. <laughs> so I'm dead. Oh. Okay. We're talking, everyone's talking. Oh, why wasn't this chat showing up? I was seeing another chat. Okay, everyone's talking. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, my headphones are not working. Let me take these off. Yeah, just let us know. <laughs> there we go. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, let's try it again. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, okay, there's gonna be someone that wants to talk. Um, I couldn't understand what was going on. Uh, okay, so uh, tell me, let's try it again. Anyone, biotic factors, uh, go for it. I'm gonna mute myself so you don't echo. Since I'm not Some abiotic factors we came up with for weather, such as like uh, the cyclones and climate change. Okay, abiotic factors, good. Climate change, good. What, what, others, what others are there? Abiotic factors, so the weather. Uh, what else could come into play here? I had floods in the rain and moisture. Moisture in the air, moisture in the soil, yeah. What else could be happening in the soil? Maybe they didn't mention it specifically, but what else could be happening in the soil? Uh, the eggs that are laid in there. Okay, the eggs would be biotic though, right? Because yeah. uh, but maybe it's like the perfect soil for the eggs to be light, good. Um, yeah, so something's happening in the soil to make it perfect for that, okay. Um, Elizabeth, what about biotic factors that are not the locust? Um, all the rain caused a lot more vegetation, so that's more food for the locusts to eat. Yeah, great job with the uh, vegetation. Some people forget that vegetation is biotic, that it's living things. So they might say like trees are abiotic. Good, all right. Um, yeah, I like now I'm seeing all these chats. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, uh, what about some examples of, uh, of geographic data? Like how was it used? There were a ton of different things on the story map uh, that was using geographic data. So almost all the 
uh, environmental information we have is somehow tagged to a location, uh, to geography. Um, so for example, if uh, Lexi is the marine biologist, right? The one that wants to be a marine biologist, do we have Lexi? If she is out in a boat and she is taking water samples, um, she's going to be uh, attaching some sort of uh, location to that. Um, and if we have, uh, right, Lexi? You're the one that likes sharks, right? So you might be saying where, where the sharks are spotted, uh, you know, even if you take temperature readings, everything has to have a location because then if we have Tess, who is also a biologist, she is looking at the sharks in a different part of the world. Uh, all that data is going to be geotagged as well, right? Um, and this is not only for science. So um, if we have, uh, who was the uh, criminal justice? Um, criminal justice, do we have a criminal justice? Uh, Denisha, you are doing forensics, right? So if Denisha is doing forensics, uh, she might want to see, okay, a crime was committed or like you're analyzing some sort of sample. Uh, you might want to see like what kind of, uh, you know, you, it could be a soil sample that, that was like on someone's shoe and you might want to see like what's around that location and what is the topography like, what are the types of soil like. All that stuff would be linked to geographic data. Um, you could also, if you're doing uh, things like social work, uh, you could be like, okay, well, where is the highest poverty? Or is this an area where there's uh, typically more crime than others? Or, um, you know, things like that. So uh, really important. So tell me some of the things that you found from the story map. Um, who haven't I called on? Uh, Gracie, I haven't heard from you. Um said about um, 173,000 acres were infested in Kenya. Okay, so area infected. Good. That's one part. What else? Uh, someone else. Area infected was one. What else? In one region of the map, it showed like how much profit was lost depending on different regions, um, depending on which country. That's right. So amount of crop lost or amount of um, income lost too. Okay, good. What else? Uh, there was a graph or like a chart on there that showed um, how much more vegetation there was in certain areas than average. So in some areas there was up to like 50% more vegetation. Yeah, thanks, Joel. So uh, yeah, some, the green one was showing like how much more vegetation is it. All these places that these crazy uh, locusts are just going insane with their hormones. And I mean, can you imagine that transformation? They look so cute, like little uh, grasshoppers. And all of a sudden, um, it gets, you know, wet and they start transforming into these things with like red eyes and really bright yellow and uh, their bodies shrink and they go crazy and just like breathe everywhere and just explode. So it's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, adolescents on like steroids and uh, zombies. Okay, what else? Uh, what else do we have? Did we miss anything? Uh, what else? I found another one too. Uh, pesticides, did you catch that one? So how much was treated? Um, how much, and this is actually, you know, it's the only way to deal with them is the pesticides when they're in the air. Um, but uh, really important too is the fact that a lot of these locusts, they're actually used for proteins for animal feeds. So they take them and they crush them and they use them in uh, 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 animal feeds to feed like uh, cows and pigs and stuff for agriculture, but when they're treated with insecticides, um, they're not able to be used for that and people can't eat them. Uh, so the, obviously that's kind of like, you know, you have this, like all this stuff that you can't use in any other way. Um, okay, so that's another problem. Not just, not just that they eat all the crops, but that you also can't use them because they've been treated. And you can't use them for protein, for feed. Um, okay, anything else, anything else? So, um, so this is a really cool, uh, these, uh, these story maps are a cool way to kind of uh, show environmental information, but also like social, like how, well, you know, the, the poverty around the area or like the amount of income loss, uh, just kind of put it all together into this interactive. Um, so it's a neat way to, uh, to kind of put all the science and all the demographics together. Um, so we're going to do something similar to this, uh, obviously not as, uh, you know, well executed since it's, 
probably cost a lot of money to make that interactive. But what we're going to do, and sorry, I couldn't give you guys a, a break because we're kind of finishing up here. But um, what we're going to do uh, next lesson is I'm going to just let me share the next slide. Um, I still, I'm still think that's funny about the me talking to everyone. <laughs> I was feeling really ignored. Um, okay. But I could see everyone's face laughing. So I thought kind of like maybe they're just like making fun of me through the chat and just talking to another saying, don't say anything. <laughs> okay. So for Thursday, uh, there's a video clip that you're going to read about GIS, which is like taking all this geographic information and kind of sandwich it together into layers. Um, so you'll read that it's, I think it's like five to 10 minute video. Um, and it's marked on the, um, it's marked on the uh, calendar, but you'll need the link. So you'll need to go to these slides and just press on this link. And then what we're going to do, um, is we're going to do a little story map of, uh, or something like it. Come on, move to this next slide. Oh, sorry, oh, actually, it's the one before it. All right. So what we're going to do on Thursday, and I think this will work well since people are going to, some want to be in the class, I want to be at home, you know, everyone will be pleased. This, um, we're going to make this story map of rising. So from the book, some of the places that were mentioned in the book, but also some places that weren't, but that are also being affected by uh, sea level rise. So you guys are going to pick one of these places in twos. Um, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. If I'm going to let you guys pick or if I'm just going to assign them logistically, I'm not sure what will work best, but there's going to be two of you working on them. And then you are going to post on this Padlet, which is uh, a map and it's kind of cool. So it's a special kind of Padlet that allows you to pin a place and then write about it. So let's say for example, that I had um, you know, so let's say that you're going to press this like you would for any Padlet. And let's say that I'm going to be writing about, uh, you know, sea level rise in Boston. So I could go like that and it would take me to Boston right here. And then I can write something about it. So say, you know, uh, these areas of Boston are going to be affected. Uh, these are the kind of things that the town is, that the city is doing to mitigate this uh, future impact. And you could also do things like upload a photo or you could put a link. Um, and actually you can do also like a little put in a video or a YouTube video or whatever. So all kinds of things. Okay. So we're going to make like our own story map interactive for rising. Um, so, um, any questions before I let you guys go so that you can, at least I can make up for the four or five minutes that I didn't give you, um, any questions at all? Um, okay. So Thursday, come to the class that is listed. I will send you, um, a reminder. And uh, if you're not comfortable going into the class, stay at home, uh, get on Zoom at the same time. Uh, we're probably gonna meet for like uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes on Zoom. And then I'm going to have everyone work on these on this project individually. So if you're come to your class, to the class, make sure you also have your computer so you can work on it, okay? And then I will kind of set you guys off to do it. All right, so have a great afternoon. And uh, thank you everyone for your patience. Um, and I will talk to you guys soon, bye.